Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, coming to you from the Beats Lab, Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. We're going to jump right into this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to do this sweet masking technique. All right, we're grabbing this panel. We left them off, obviously, in the build. Tamiya masking tape. We're using that six millimeter, that small shit. We just start lining it up, man. Little trial and error here. Try to get those chevrons lined up. I try to use points on the trim, like those nuts and those bolts. Always use them nuts. Try to get my lines as even as possible. I like to use a secondary tool here to flatten out up against these ridges. Don't hesitate to get in there tight, but you know, minimize how hard you're pressing on this paint. You don't wanna jack it up. Same deal here as we cross over to make this chevron. I'm trying to use any marker I can find on the trim. It might be a little off in areas, but trust me, once you get it locked in, it don't matter. I'm using a very sharp brand new blade and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down this line created by the tape and peel it off very slowly to create that chevron. There it is. Now don't worry if it's not totally perfect. There's a reason I always start with black, then I airbrush the yellow. That is because if you fuck up at all during the airbrush process, any overspray finds its way under the tape. It's a lot easier to come back in with a paintbrush and just kind of line it out a little bit with black than with yellow. Now that we've got all this tape down here, I'm gonna use that very sharp blade to pop little relief holes in some of the areas of the tape that are bubbling up because it's struggling up against some of these sharp Baroque armor trim pieces. Just drop in little incisions here to flatten it out. Pretty simple. There it is. Now just go through, do all your pieces at once. Make sure they all look nice and even. Do your best. You, you'll be surprised how much tolerance there is in, in this, that you don't need to be that perfect. All right, guys, we're gonna grab that airbrush and we'll do this right now. A little flow improver. Now, here's one of my favorite colors for beginning any yellow workup, Bogren Brown from the Grimkin line. This is P3 formula. I'm gonna grab a couple of dollops of this paint, drop it in the airbrush. Now, it's always difficult to paint yellow, period, but over black, even trickier, but with Bogren Brown, you'll see how easy this is. Get it loaded up. It's not very thin, but it's not very thick. You know what I mean? We're kind of a little bit above our normal super thin mix, but we're still gonna do a very thin top coat here. I'm trying to angle the airbrush in such a way where it doesn't fly right under the tape anywhere where it might be precarious. I'm trying to come straight down, throw it up the channel, but I think we did a good job taping it down, so I'm not too worried about it. Very thin coat, don't force it. You don't want the water in the paint to build up and then soak its way through the tape. You wanna keep it as dry as possible, so several thin coats will always be your ally in here even more than ever. We're gonna go through real quick, drop our thin coats, and then we're gonna start building up the second coat. And you can see the second coat of Bogram Brown sticks super hard. And it already sort of looks yellow, that's what I love about it. Now we're gonna take a little of that GW Flash Gets Yellow. It's the best yellow in the business as far as I'm concerned. GW, good job. We're gonna take some of the dirty paint water left over from the Bogan Brown. We're gonna mix a couple dollops of this flash gets in so it's a nice mustard yellow. Mix your paints. You don't need to buy a thousand paints. And now we're gonna start creating a transition top down on these panels. Try to keep our orientation right, looking at pictures of the Kai Tan, which is the conversion pieces we use for this project. We're feathering in a nice mid-tone here on the tops of all these panels, trying to create just an interesting transition. I don't wanna to go too hard because there is a lot of natural beauty and a lot of weathering in this model. So I don't wanna go on like a normal electric transitions like super out of, the, out of control. So we are gonna mute it a little bit, but I'm gonna show you a couple techniques for keeping it vibrant still. A little bit more flow improver. Now it's time to go to pier, flash gets yellow. A couple dollops in here. And we're gonna start really sticking it with that highlight color. Look at that. Getting an amazing, an amazing transition here. I will take it a little bit brighter, and I'll explain why once we get to that stage. Here's that one big piece of armor. I didn't do any stripes on this because it's kind of in the back and it'd be a pain in the dick. So we're just gonna do some extra hand weathering on that at a later date. Here we go. We get a little bit of that hobo white, slowfusegaming.com. We're gonna mix it in here and we're gonna brighten this yellow. Now I normally don't like this because anytime you add white to a color like this, it will pastel the color. It won't be vibrant anymore. It'll be brighter, but it loses a little bit of that uh, flair. But this is almost like a stutter step pre-shade. We're gonna drop this white mixed with yellow in as a final transition highlight. 
Then we're gonna go back to Pure Flash Gets Yellow, a little bit extra thin, very thin with a lot of flow and poover. And we're gonna do a quick glaze. And what it's gonna do is gonna snap the yellow back into that pastel ass white and make it a lot more vibrant for two more seconds of work. So now we got that bright yellow without it being pastel and washed out. That's a trick. I like to go back and forth to the midtone. A lot of people will just pre-shade from the beginning, but at any point during the project, I can slap a little white in there, then glaze the color back over it and shift it back to that vibrancy. One of my ancient Chinese techniques. Feeling that? Now it's time to start peeling this tape, tape off as soon as we get these last little nuggets done, these little knee pads and everything. This has been a fun project and now we finally get to see what it looks like. So we're gonna slowly peel the tape off. This is always, you know, hard. When you drop all your colors down, you know, you gotta wait a long time between coats. We primed this model, then we primed it again. Then we let it dry for a while. Then we painted a little black on it. Then we let it dry. Then we varnished it. Then we'd put our tape on it. And now we're slowly peeling it off and there we go. We're not pulling any of that paint with us. That's perfect. And you can see that that little line got a little choppy. That's fine. That's why I do it this way. I'm just going to take one or two little strokes with my paintbrush with a little pure black. I could repair that five seconds. Some people like to go yellow first, then black. But to me, that's way harder to repair any inevitable overspray or angles on the lines that don't look right. Feeling it. 100%. And, you know, for the most part, once you get this trim locked in, you're not even going to notice that kind of shit. Feeling that Chevron looks good. It's a little off center, but like I said, once it's on the model and it's kind of in motion and you're just looking at it from different angles, you will literally never notice any of these imperfections. Feeling that there's this thigh armor. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this on the model real quick, get it on there. Bow! Finally, he remembered leg day. He's looking jacked. It's like a mini Warhound Titan, like a gigantic armbruger. Love this dude. Here we go. Now you could have just painted the trim before you glued them on. I, didn't, I just was impatient. So we're using Shining Silver. This is Army Painter. That's actually a color match to all the other metal. We've been doing this project live on Twitch. If you want to follow along, don't forget. We do that every Tuesday, every Friday. And this tutorial is just for you guys. Here we go. Knocked all that trim out. It's immediately looking sharper. And we're going to come in real quick with a little dark tone. This is Army Painter. It's the best in the business. They make the best washes. We're going to thin it down just a little bit. We're going to cut in this trim. We're going to make sure to create a little bit of a wash border between the trim and the fields of yellow and black chevrons, creating a nice, strong border. We thinned it down just a little bit, and we're just going to stay in motion, get some good staining. We're going to make sure it gets around those bolts, and then we'll come back in later, throw a couple inch highlights in. Bow. Done. Then, live on Twitch, I will do a little bit of extra weathering on these greaves, make them look th suitably chaos. But this has been a long time coming, guys. This project has been near and dear to me. This is a Kaitan with an extra Kaitan arm swap with a Forge World Chaos Knight. Man, I am feeling this. Anyway, guys, do me a favor. If you like what you see here, you like these fresh looking kits, you like following along with these projects, Hit me up on Patreon. Patreon is my crowdfunding page. We do all these projects, obviously for free all the time, but I do offer massive rewards and different tiers on my crowdfunding platform. We've got unlimited access to our platform for only $6 a month. We've got signed, personalized gift bags, monthly loot crates, and of course, private one-on-one -on -one classes, consulting, and list design guys i truly appreciate it play on players